Hi, we will continue our discussion on eco-friendly methods of pest management. Coming to again different methods of uh, eco-friendly approach, you know we studied so far many of the tactics. Now we will concentrate more on some of the improved methods of uh, eco-friendly approach. In that, you know we have one mulching, another one of a recent version is push and pull polycropping. You know in case of mulching what happens, I mean we cover the soil with the help of uh, either plastics or sawdust or straw or even simple rice husk mainly to prevent the insect locating the host crop, not necessarily the host crop, any host plant even it may be a weed. So, because of the options of any of the plant, the insect population will not get the host to feed thereby the population death is seen. In addition to that you know because of covering of this, the temperature below the crop canopy either below the rice uh, husk or below the plastic the temperature increases. That increase in temperature also brings down these insect stages mortality. So, these are the advantages of uh, mulches which are normally used in uh, polyhouses, greenhouse situation for bringing down the insect population. Then another new innovative technology is push pull polycropping. A simple uh, way of explaining push pull uh, polycropping is just similar to the analogy of a push pull train. You know one engine will be pulling the train from the front another engine will be pushing from the back. So, which we normally call it as push pull train. The same analogy has been used as an eco friendly device in reducing the pest population. If you see the combination of behavior modifying stimuli to manipulate the distribution and abundance of pest or the beneficial insects in pest management with the ultimate goal of pest reduction on the protected host. This is the objective of push pull polycropping. This can be better explained with a simple example. You know I have a situation here corn which is one of the important crop. Corn you know is very severely attacked in the early stage by stem borer. So, this can be prevented by planting an antifident crop like desmodium because it produces some chemical stimuli which will not allow the adult stem borer to come and lay eggs on the corn because of these antifident chemical stimuli. So, the female goes away from the corn plant and goes nearer to the crop like uh, napier grass which is first of all a trap crop which is highly preferred by the corn uh, stem borer and not only for attack even for egg laying also the female prefers uh, the napier grass. So, thereby what happens here the main crop you know there will be pushing of uh, the adult uh, stem borer to go to napier grass for egg laying and also as a trap crop this will be pulling the adult uh, female for attracting the female for egg laying. So, thereby the main crop maize is totally prevented by the insect egg laying and ultimately reduces the economic damage. So, in such situations have been identified in many ecosystems and this technology is used as a very simple eco friendly device in reducing the pest population. Then coming back to some of the other methodologies still we have a very simple one you know crop rotation, plant nutrition, water management, sanitation, closed season. These are all agronomic practices followed by the farmers in the crop production tactics, but they have a direct bearing on the insect population. We will try to understand with classic example for each case. In case of crop rotation, you know it is very simple a host crop is alternated with a non host crop for a particular insect species. For example, sorghum, sorghum is attacked by sorghum shoot fly 
in almost all the sorghum growing areas. If you alternate with a other non host crop like Bengal gram, the soot fly does not go to Bengal gram. So, thereby the soot fly will not get any other host for complete one season say for about 6 months. So, automatically the survival rate of the sorghum soot fly gets reduced. So, this is how the crop rotation comes in the way and then particularly this technology is useful for a narrow host range that means insects having very limited hosts. It is not useful for a polyphagous pest like Heliothis, like Spodoptera, no. It can feed on any other host crop. It works very well for a narrow host range crops. Then say in case of cotton and groundnut alternation is very well suited for reducing the pest population both on cotton as well as on groundnut. And then groundnut and any other non leguminaceous crops is again very well suited in reducing the pest population both on groundnut as well as on non leguminous crops that we select. Then moving on to another uh, agronomic practice plant nutrition. You know nutrition status of any plant helps in overcoming the incidence of the insect population, gives a strength to the, uh, to the plant to withstand the economy, I mean the insect damage. That is why nutrition plays a major role. If you see the organic manure rich in essential nutrients induces tolerance because some of the micronutrients which are not available in chemical fertilizers the plant gets that induces a short of strength to the plant so that the plant can withstand the damage caused by the insect. Therefore, there will be a reduction in the population and then another case is slow release of nitrogen from organic manure again induces resistance to the plant because organic manure produces lot of antigenosis property, lot of hairy products develop on the plant which will not allow the egg to deposit on the plant system. So, these are all eco friendly devices which can reduce the population considerably. Go to the next one water management. Water is required for a uh, for almost all the crops for higher yields, but the management of using water plays a major role once again in influencing the insect population. For example, some of the insects they hide during daytime in the soil, but the same insect immediately after dusk they come out and then feed on the plant parts on the reproductive parts of the plant. For example, insects like cutworm, insects like army worm, insects like root grub they always feed during night time. So, in the morning if you flood the field for about 4 to 5 hours with irrigation water all those insect stages will be suffocated and resulting in death of the insect population. Anyway we need irrigation, but making the water to stand in the field for about 4 to 5 hours you will be bringing down some of the population which are hiding in the soil that is the concept. And then technique called overhead irrigation you know sprinkler irrigation and drip irrigation these are some of the new technologies used in water management, but not only saving the water they also have a direct influence on the reduction of pest population. I have a classic example uh, in this uh, photograph you know the particularly the sprinkler irrigation has been found to be effective in suppressing majority of the foliage feeding insects in case of potato, in case of cabbage particularly from diamond back moth attack because overhead uh, irrigation through sprinkler irrigation washes out the egg population which are there on the upper side of the leaf. So, that is a very classic example. So, that is why every some of our ancestors say a good rain washes out majority of the population where in the dry weather with the cloudy humid nature increases the population. The reason is water washes out the insect stages very effectively. So, this is one of the eco friendly technology that we have. 
then sanitation or the clean cultivation which is one of the important thing uh, uh, in reducing the pest population. If you just see here clean cultivation it is an age old practice of taking out the last year stubbles. The main reason is the last season stubbles or last year stubbles contain the hibernating or the resting stages of the insect larvae. They overwinter there, thereby the pest is carried forward to the next season. If you destroy these old stubbles, you will be killing the overwintering larval population significantly. Then removal of cotton stalks from the last season, they also inhibit lot of pink bowl worm. So, destruction of this in fact one of the act was passed long back of destroying the cotton stalks mainly to reduce the pink bowl worm damage. Then removal of alternate hosts as I already discussed this helicoverpa itself survives in the off season on lagasca weed. We may have to reduce by clean cultivation the removal of uh, these alternate hosts thereby the population can be reduced. And then removal of stalks and stubbles particularly in case of sorghum you know the soot fly the stem borer stages will inhibit in these stubbles again clean cultivation comes in the way of reducing the pest population. Closed season this is again an important uh, eco friendly technology closed season is almost a crop holiday. If you give a crop holiday for a particular pest say for example paddy in the country paddy is cultivated almost three crops. The pest population gets an occasion to multiply on all these th crops. If you give an holiday, if you take out summer uh, paddy crop, there will be a breakage of the crop, the host will not be available for the insect to multiply and automatically in the next ensuing season there will be reduction in the pest population. And, uh, Particularly in case of sugarcane woolly aphid, this is working very well in if you remove the one season sugarcane crop, this particular pest can be reduced considerably. And particularly in case of monophagous pests, this closing of the season works very well because it is a single host the insect attacks. These are some of the important eco friendly techniques which play a major role in reducing the pest population.